So first of all, thank you for taking the time to do this today. Um, the finale, well, the series was, but also the finale was just incredible. I mean, to the point of almost that, that last few seconds, almost maybe physically ill. Um, the performances, the direction, the editing, it's just, I, I couldn't believe how much it hit me. So bravo to all of you for that. Well, thank you, Stephen. I, I, uh, I remember watching it myself for the first time and my heart was pounding so much. I, I could like feel, I, could, I put my hand over my heart. I was like, I can feel my heart leaping. Yeah, I, I didn't expect, like, it's, it's like you were just running a mile and said, oh, let's stop. And then boom, 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 like, you know, your physical reaction, that goes to, to, to credits. And you're like, wait, I have to wait a year? This is not fair. Yeah, but, sorry about that. <laughs> hey, you know what? That's a, that's a great feeling. The best shows are the ones that want you, keep you wanting more. So my, my first question for you is, who are you? Oh, wait, hold on. I got ahead of myself. <laughs> my, my first question is, uh, what was it that got you into acting? And feel free to say unknown. <laughs> Great. <laughs> You're the first person actually in this interview process to tap into that. So, uh, bravo. <laughs> <laughs> what first got me into acting? Um, my mom is uh, an, an incredibly creative person and really uh, infused me with a love for performance. You know, I did dance classes and singing and she would write a play every year uh, that we would do at Christmas time uh, up in our loft. And I, I grew up in this really small town and um, just that idea that art is for everybody and uh, can be and should be done all the time. That's, that's kind of what she infused um, my, my uh, childhood with. And I'm super grateful for that because to get to make a career out of um, making things is something I, I didn't even realize you could do. Uh, and uh, yes, I'm super grateful that that's, that's my life. I, I love that idea that art is for everyone because it, it truly is. And you talk to people and they feel, I get question, well, are you an artist? And I'm like, who do you, like, who, like almost like, who do you think you are? You're not, you know, on my television. But I'm like, it's, it's the second person I've spoken with recently who said they put on Christmas plays at home. And I was really? like, that's where it begins. Yeah. And it, I thought I did as well. My, my family, we always did. We all we were always involved with like little productions. I was one of six kids. So oh. it's, uh, you know, I think it's a great thing. And I think it's, it, it kind of uh, encourages you to think and be something different and not just kind of follow the, the rules and, and, and the standards and just to be yourself. So just, yeah. I, I love to hear oh, those. Oh, I things. love that. Yeah. It's, it's a kind of like art, like making uh making art in your house like just also engaging with your imagination with your loved ones is such a great way to to um start a life as an artist and um it's one of the reasons i love being on set so much is because it becomes this little village this uh small family that um almost like going to summer camp you know for this period of time mm -hmm you get together and you you're like living and working together um and yeah i love it i think it's once you embrace that you can entertain your family who can be your harshest critics as well i think it opens totally. the world to you to to go out and and explore you know and take it on to bigger and, and bigger things so i don't want to continue down that path too long because i could talk okay. all day but um before i i, I hop in um you're involved with the circus is what i heard i'm like very intrigued is yeah you tell me a little uh, bit i'm about coming that? to you from st louis right now i'm inside of my camper it's called the egg and i'm performing in a circus here for the month of june that's called circus flora i'm living out a, a childhood lifelong dream to perform in a, in a traditional um circus and i'm playing my ukulele and uh playing a character who's overcoming her fear of um, a lot of things, but uh, she she overcomes her fear by playing her ukulele when she's scared. That's awesome. Um, so uh, next thing I want to ask is, can you name any state or territory in the United States? Feel free to say unknown. Uh, Illinois. Oh, good job. All right, and we'll move on. Uh, how did you get involved in Severance? 
<laughs> um, I made a self tape uh, of the very first scene of the whole series uh, at my house in my bathroom because I had great lighting there. And uh, I filmed, yeah, the whole first scene is almost exactly as it was when I first received it back in 2019. Um, and that tape got into the hands of the right folks. And um, yeah, I was just super uh, grateful that I got a call back and um, was, it was a kind of, wow, fall to my knees moment to get to, to get to play a character like Kelly, who's so, uh, so, so brave and rebellious and uh, unexpected. And what was it that drew you to it? What about the, the, uh, the story or the character? Well, the writing and the world itself are so, it's so unique. The tone is, it has an edge to it, but it also has this kind of vulnerability and sweetness uh, between the characters. And I, I just hadn't read anything like that before. Um, Heli, of course, I was drawn to her because of her sense of resilience and the way that she navigates the world of uh, Lumen. She immediately knows that something is off and her first instinct is to escape. And so as an actor, it was a really fun challenge to not only play someone who has no idea who they are, but also be playing someone who has a really clear objective, which is to get out of work at all costs. Yeah. It's, and find uh, out who she is. In the yeah. That. I mean, there's so much to, to, to dig into. It's, it's uh, from the first episode to the last, the amount of things that, that the, the amount of creativity just crammed in there is just so impressive. And to be caught up with it, but also be caught up with the human aspect of these characters. It's not just like a sci-fi, you know, make you think, but it's very emotional. There's very emotional moments. Um, it's it's such a unique, unique show. So I was wondering, what kind of shows and movies do you watch? Like, is this, are you drawn to things like this or? Uh, yeah, I mean, one of my favorite movies of all time is Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Oh. So it, <laughs> uh, it, this show obviously touches on some elements of that. I, I really am drawn to stories that, um, like this one, feel open-hearted and have an element of whether it's not necessarily sci-fi, but kind of a, a alternate reality or an imaginative reality. Uh, I, I like a little bit of magic in there. Um, and I'm most, most drawn to character-driven work and stories that really explore um, characters' relationships to one another, moving through an obstacle together and uh, and I like stuff to be funny. So you get to work with Ben Stiller on this and this film or this series does not feel like what you'd expect of a, a Ben Stiller project, but when you're approached, what, or when you worked with him, what was it like? What was that relationship like? Everyone on set is, is um, everyone in the, uh, as a part of this project is super creatively generous and Ben is no exception. He's, He's so kind and passionate about the work. Um, you know, yeah, I think when people think of Ben, they think of uh, some of the like goofy or sillier roles that he's played that are so hysterically funny, but he's a really serious guy. You know, he's a, he's a true artist. I think he's one of the greatest directors of our time. And uh, having seen Escape at Danamora um, with, uh, that he worked on with us, Kelly Gagné, who's also our DP for this project, uh, you know, you, I could see his, uh, that through line there um, of the, the cinematography and the visuals. It's, he's just a very cinematic director and, uh, and a great guy. The story is very time, like time bendy, full of mystery. It keeps the viewers on their toes. I'm wondering what that does for you as, uh, you know, as part of the cast, as one of the characters. How difficult is that to shoot and to stay, like kind of tap into the right mindset at the right time? Uh, it's a great, it's a great challenge because you're doing some sort of mind bending when you're, uh, when you film out of order, like we did, um, mm -hmm. because, uh, we had all nine episodes 
scripts ahead of time, I was able to literally map out Kelly's journey on my wall, almost like a kind of graphic novel. I drew all the scenes on little index cards so I could pinpoint visually where we were in the season. Um, you know, we filmed over the course of, I think, 10 months. So sometimes we were shooting the same day uh, that we had shot nine months earlier. And for me, having a little visual reference um, helped me to, to tap into the right moment. I also use a lot of music and uh, for to get into the feeling and objective piece of it. Are there certain songs that you use? A variety of different songs, um, but a lot of like, I was watching a lot of um, early Patti Smith concerts to uh, hone in on that unapologetic punk energy that um, felt really in a part of, of Kelly. Yeah, the the characters, it, I, I figured it must be really tough because you are characters who don't know who you are, but when you think you know who you are, you're not sure if you know who who you really are, is, if that makes sense. So it's like, I mean, just just watching it is makes you think, makes you work hard. And I think it must be like uh, mental gymnastics for for the cast. Uh, but it, it all works out, it all pays off, it all delivers and, and delivers that impact that you're hoping for. Um, once they're in the outside world and the innies start to realize what they're missing, uh, especially that moment where Dylan sees his child, it's just absolutely breaking. And you just wonder how can these people going forward, how could they possibly think about anything but what is on the other side of that? Um, so it really has some like ethical weight to it. Is, it's a, is that's a lot to process. What's your take on that? Yeah, Helly is, is really waking up in the office um, and becoming not only the audience's point of view of what it feels like to be stripped of one's freedom and autonomy, but she also becomes this catalyst for the rest of the office workers to wake up from their day-to-day -day routine, this kind of office status quo that they've been in, you know, they may have reacted the same way when they first woke up in the office, but they've kind of settled into this rhythm of, okay, well, let's just keep our, our heads low and get the work done. But Heli blazes through and really starts to raise those questions of who are we, what are we doing here, and what are the ethical implications of being kept somewhere against one's will? And I really admired um, the writing in that everyone's journey is so specific to them, it's, you know, especially um, Zach and Dylan's character and his connection to his family. And you come to understand the, the value system that each character is uh, operating from and what matters to them most. For Heli, she really wants to know who she is at core and who her family is on the outside. Um, and then of course, uh, and of course um, the big reveal at the end is that um, who she realizes that she is, is, is her own worst enemy. Lots of process and very little time too. It, you know, it's in that last episode and a half when you get hit with just so much. Um, so working in that environment, uh, it's, the, the monotony of the white and the gross greens and the, the terrible lighting. Uh, is that, that's, I heard that's an actual building, is that correct? Uh, yeah, the, the inside was a studio that they built um, in, uh, at York Studios in the Bronx. The exteriors were a part of uh, Bell Labs in New Jersey. So oh, okay. that, that, that building does exist, but the uh, interiors were um, a set. Uh, yeah, I was wondering what, what kind of demon uh, designed that interior, but I, working in that environment, does it wear on you? Super inspiring. Yeah, I think we all went a little bonkers. Um, one of my favorite things that happened was, you know, we were working in these windowless office uh, environment, fluorescent lighting. And uh, one day someone accidentally left the door to the studio open and this very friendly chicken walked onto our set and started making itself at home. Um, and just all of a sudden seeing this element from nature inside of this office environment was 
uh, like that it was happening on our set. And then two weeks later, we were filming the goat scene. It felt like there was this meta universe and uh, that maybe there was someone playing a trick on all of us. <laughs> Yeah, well, eventually, uh, was it a lamb that shows up on set too? So it's like, yeah, yeah they're the... ba baby goats. There's a whole baby, goats, baby goats. goats. Yes, mm -hmm. you may as well just you know, have a, a, a green bag nearby just in case. Um, yeah, exactly. So your character battles with herself over resignation, and you're playing two different in one scene. One's on tape, of course, but how do you approach that? You know, it's like, can you tune out? Uh, you know, being an actress and, and look at that as in, and do you get right, I'm sorry, let me start over. Do you get right into the character and uh, hone in on that or like? In terms of differ differentiating the, the two sides? When you're watching, yeah, when you're watching yourself on the screen and you have to play against this other character. I don't understand acting. I don't, you know, we could discuss this. <laughs> um, well, you know, what I can say is, uh, Anytime you see Audi Helly, she's in a presentational scenario. So we're seeing her being watched by someone else. She's being, she's filming a, a videotape back to herself that she knows will be watched. So we're not seeing any unmediated version of her. Whereas with any Helly, we understand why she's making all the decisions that she's making because we've seen her in intimate moments by herself and we've been through, through all of the journey with her. So it's, uh, it's harder to understand what Audi Helly is up to. I think that's what's exciting about season two is we'll get to know a little bit more of what her motivations are for what she's doing and uh, get to know which value system they overlap. So obviously the same person. So they have some, uh, they have a lot of the same core values. Um, but for me, Audi Heli was representing much more of this um, ego side and any was like the id and nature versus nurture. Uh, so that's kind of how I, I thought of the two sides of Heli. And you have that big moment, uh, which is pretty unsettling, the, her attempted suicide. Is, uh, does that get into your mind? Does that like mind, excuse me, does that traumatize a tough scene to shoot or are you just too wrapped up in the like logistics of it all to let it sink in? Yeah, that sequence is something that we dealt with with great sensitivity. Um, and Helly values her freedom and autonomy more than anything. So that sequence really speaks to the depths to which she feels betrayed and trapped by her own self. And you literally watch a character uh, wage a war against herself. You know, as much as that is an act of attempted suicide, it's also, um, it's also an act of revenge. She's really mm -hmm. seeing herself on the outside as a different person in that moment. And what do you think the right work balance, work regular life balance is it seems so tough for many of us and like this series really makes you think of it differently I'm just curious what your thoughts are on that well I thought it was very uh thought it was very interesting that we as a cast were not able to hang out outside of our workplace um because of COVID or due, due to the COVID um we were filming during COVID and so we were all being very um safe with um you know health cautions um and so the first time that all of us got to hang out outside of work was actually at these most recent um for your consideration events doing publicity for the show and wow. uh, we were just all of us were like belly laughing together and just uh it was this kind of wild like wow we really didn't have a good work-life balance because <laughs> we only know, know each other in this kind of work context for the most part um but I don't know I mean when you love what you do it doesn't feel like work it feels like it is work but it, it's also play it's, it's like what we were talking about at the beginning it's like using your imagination and getting into that flow state 
with others who are creating together. Um, it's certainly hard work, but uh, it feels like fun too. Yeah, the speaking of the cash, well, it's very fitting that you didn't have you had a you know only one relationship, you know, the only the work. It seems like almost like it probably might have helped you get into that mindset of, you know, you you walk out of work and you're right back into work, and that's the only relationship you have with these people. But what's it like working with them on set? You had an amazing cast. Um, you know, John Turturro, Walken, uh, Adam Scott, you know, it's uh, Patricia Charquette. What's it like working with uh, with these great, you know, great names? Well, I was grateful for the first part of, uh, like when we weren't acting together, we would have our masks on and that was probably a good thing because my jaw was dropped most of the time. <laughs> and I was like, I'm working with these legends. I can't believe this is happening. Um, but no, like I said, everyone was so generous and just working at the top of their game and and really just so passionate about the work that they were doing. It's such a treasure to get to watch. You know, a, a lot of our um, tracks on the show are very separate. And so it was, it's been so nice to watch the show come out. I feel like I'm also an audience member getting to see um, my friend's work uh, for the first time and see how the show comes together as a whole. Uh, just, it's a really, I think it's a really beautiful, uh, piece of art and I'm I just feel lucky that I'm a part of it hey I mean we're lucky you're part of it you're fantastic you know I, really your, your work on it is is just wonderful and I'm like you you not only do you, you hold up I think you're just on par with everyone else's performances if not better oh stop no thank you that's so nice I mean it is very humbling it's great to see I mean like I know you've worked quite a bit but I mean I think this might be that moment where it's like where you explode, you know, where everybody just like, you know, the household name type and they'll, and people will pronounce your last name properly. <laughs> you know, I, I keep saying like, I'm, I'm so grateful this, this moment didn't happen in my career any earlier. I, I just have been building really kind of slowly over the past 10 years and working consistently but not you know uh not not have having a chance to be a part of something like this that's really touched into the zeitgeist and i i just feel really grateful that this this role came along at this time and it, it, it's it's just not lost on me that it's a it's a really kind of rare chemistry of um of cast and story and and role it just feels like it, it fits and i I'm, I'm speaking in a run-on sentence right now. No, don't worry about it. It's, you're, you're talking to me, so it's probably the norm. Um, <laughs> but that's great. You know, to see it, it's, it's great to know when someone appreciates, you know, that their work is great, but also that they appreciate kind of what it is and, and how you affect people. Because it's one of those things that you, not, not everyone gets the opportunity to, to scare, to make people laugh, to make people cry, to make people feel. And especially when in, in this crazy time when, People have been so broken. And if you watch the news, it's tough. It's it's like every day is tough. And then you get to yeah. escape with these characters. And you know, it's great to, it's just something I, I it's a reason I do this. It's because I think mm. storytelling is not only uh, important in, in because it, it gives you an escape, but it's also uh, a great empathy machine and allows people mm -hmm. to, to see the world differently. So yeah, I just, uh, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you you were part of this and and got to bring this to to the world. Thank you. Yeah, there's something about the, I think the story right now uh, is touching, uh, touching a part of people's hearts because we've all felt like we're we've been trapped, mm -hmm. that we've been um, isolated outside of like something outside of our control is um, is keeping us. Um, from the sunshine and these characters are again in this windowless fluorescent lighting and watching them come together and, and form this alliance of um, breaking out I think is um, it's it's really touching uh, mm -hmm. a part of um, people's hearts yeah you can connect to it certainly mine I'm connected to it for sure yeah 
it's it's like a metaphor for all of us in different ways which again goes back to the whole thing about like every you know about the importance of entertainment that we can all experience in our own ways and and i'll be right so you know i just love i, I just love quality entertainment i you know I, i'm gonna cut all this out and i'm just like you know, sitting here <laughs> going on and on but um so just a few more things real quick uh I, I was curious how much did you know going into it you know so when you started this process did you were you explain where that it's all going to go or was it a mystery to you um well i had all nine scripts ahead of season one um okay. so i i did know um Helly's trajectory in the first season but i kept myself purposefully in the dark about uh, the particulars of what Lumen does exactly, and some of the other intricacies of um, the the world building. I wanted to be on the edge of my seat as Heli, just like the audience is, uh, in in a constant state of like hungriness for uh, what the hell is going on, and um, yeah, being at the um, being in a state of investigation. Yeah, and when you watch it all come together, it must be very rewarding. As you said, your you know, your heart was racing, but you know to see it all, all the pieces, and start getting those puzzle pieces put together. Um, what was that experience like, you know, as a whole? Yeah, it's really impactful that final episode, watching um, Mark and Irving and Helly all wake up at the same time, while Dylan is is holding those uh those levers i had no yeah. idea that zach was holding those levers <laughs> for such a long time like as the actor but also uh in character it's like everyone did such beautiful work there and it's uh like again waking up and not having any clue where you are and having to discover and put the pieces together everyone is strategizing how do i find someone I can trust and at the same time not reveal who I am to like what's going on to everyone. It's a very, it's a tightrope balance there. And I thought, uh, I, I thought the, the cinematography uh, with the steady cam, the use of the steady cam in that episode and the editing and like the score, I mean, everything just came together in this uh, really dynamic, exciting way. Uh, what other types of projects are you looking for? in the future do you have things you know in your mind or just kind of take it day by day uh i am currently developing my short film circus person into a longer format oh, project okay. as part of why i'm here with the circus is getting to know the circus community and really uh understanding it from the inside and what do you expect like how long is that process going to be before you well fingers crossed i'll be in production uh after we finish filming season two of well, best, best of luck in, on that. When's season two going to come out? Uh, to say? Your guess is as good as mine. No one knows. <laughs> no. Okay. I, I see people online you know, begging for it, and I'm like, I'm one of them. You know, it's yeah. uh, it really is painful. That's why sometimes I like to skip like until the end of the season to start watching because that way it shortens that that gap. Um, I just want to say the one thing I really enjoyed was that that line you have about wearing the Mark's face as a mask and the, you know. <laughs> about being the last person uh, who, who fucked with me. I mean, just the, that, for some reason that just, I mean, it's, you just nailed it there. It got me too. I had to like memorize it really well because every time I tried to say it initially, it made me laugh. So I was like laughing at the joke myself, which is like not what you're supposed to do when you're delivering a job. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to, I had to say it about a uh, hundred times before it just became a natural line, but yeah. The writing in this show is so funny. It's so bizarre and idiosyncratic and also really heartfelt at the same time. Yeah, that that's just perfection, that that scene. And it's <laughs> like I, I somehow want to capture it on a t-shirt or, or something, but I just like, <laughs> I, I, I want to yeah, own I that. Put it on a t-shirt. <laughs> put a chip in my head, maybe. There you go. Um so to close out, I have uh four quick questions. Three words that describe your any and three words that describe your Audi. Uh, any Heli, um, rebellious, feral, and raw. Audi Heli is smooth, cunning, 
and loyal. All right, I like it. That's a perfect score. <laughs> well done. Nice. Well, thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you so much for your work on it. Really loves it. And I'm looking forward to seeing season two and I'm looking forward to seeing your, your, your film come out. So best of luck thank on that. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for your thoughtful right. questions. Thanks for having me. Have a great day. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye now.